we've, we've, with the heart rate uh, variability review, the overview of where we were, where it comes from, the electrocardiogram, the RRIs, and the PPIs, uh, we, we mentioned a little bit about training, mentioned a little bit about sleep and overall stress. People talk about stress in very specific ways, but it really stresses this really big, global, general thing. So many things can lead to stress. We cannot narrow that down. There's stress from exercise. There's stress from your work. There's stress from not sleeping enough. And what we, we need to keep that in mind when we're talking about heart rate variability, that the stress that we measure is global stress. All the stresses that add up on your body and result in this day-to-day -day variation which we try to soften a little bit by using some, some averaging, some maybe a seven day average of some of the stuff that we've looked at. And then we look at the research to try to determine what are the best practices, what are the things that have been supported in the literature um, using heart rate variability. And we've talked about training. One of the things that you can do with training is um, fitness. Am I more fit now than I was before, or am I more fit than some comparable group that I want to, some normative group that I want to compare myself to? One is uh, overall training. So, am I fatiguing? Am I, am I, I've increased my training load. That may mean that I've been doing more intervals. That may be that I just started a, a, a workout program and I might be doing a little bit too much because you either do too much uh, overall or too much intensity and that can lead to, to injury, that can lead to lack, uh, inability to perform. And we're not talking about elite level people. We're talking about, I want to go out and walk three miles tomorrow as good as I walked two days ago. So is this decrease in HRV guiding some overall training recommendations. And again, that's not just for elite athletes, that's for everyone. Uh, that's for good overall healthiness. And then uh, fatigue, we can monitor fatigue to some extent. We can monitor fatigue, we can monitor sleep cycles. So we can monitor deep sleep, we can monitor REM sleep. When uh, HRV has been shown to uh, change when you're doing psychomotor tasks. So I'm doing a boring task, maybe driving, I'm doing some, uh, to putting something together that could be boring and HRV changes with that. And that fatigue can be measured in, with HRV in some cases. Uh, we talked about the sleep already. So sleep, fatigue, training. And then the last thing that we talk about is uh, chronic diseases and that's really where heart rate variability started at because you can imagine that people with cardiac disease people with cardiac disease they're already on an electrocardiogram so these physicians they started to look into these physician researchers started to look into HRV and see there's correlation with this chronic disease so we're talking about people that have uh, long-term cardiac disease, they have different HRV than a, than a healthy person. Diabetics have different HRV measures than a healthy person. And then people with acute onset of car cardiac disease, perhaps a heart attack that's coming up, th that's been shown to have changes in HRV. So it's, it's wide ranging, training, fatigue, sleep, chronic disease, but the output is all the same. The output is HRV, heart rate variability, and a change in this. So just because we see a decrease in HRV doesn't necessarily mean, you know, Sally's gonna have a heart attack. Sally may have done something in her life to increase her stress, and it leads to this decrease in HRV.